we've been going over with you, and I'm going to use uh, this handy camera simulator here, which you do have access to the free online version. And if you go to my lecture, there is a link right here where it says go to camera simulator. So we're going to talk about the relationship between aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. And if you remember, aperture is how large the lens is opening on your camera. And with your camera phones, the aperture is fixed. That means you don't have a choice. It is going to be one opening all the time, usually pretty wide, usually a 1.4 to 2.8. Okay, your shutter speed is how long uh, your photo, your camera is taking a photo, or how long the shutter is open. And the longer your shutter speed is, the more light is going in. And your ISO is how sensitive your sensor is to light. So it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to do with uh, how much light is coming in. It's not letting more or less light in like aperture, but it's just the sensitivity of your sensor. And the higher the ISO, the more noise will be in your photo. So that's why we try to keep our ISO low at like about 100 is usually idea, ideal. <clears throat> So when I'm out taking a photo, I usually ask myself a couple of things. Um, do I want a shallow depth of field? Now depth of field has to do with how much of the scene in front of you is going to be in focus. Shallow or small depth of field means just a little bit is going to be in focus. So that's really nice for portraits where you want the background to just be this really nice, soft, blurry background. Um, or do I want a deep depth of field, as in taking photos of the mountains and there's a really pretty tree closer to you, so you want the tree to be in focus, you want the mountains to be in focus. Okay, so if that's what I'm worried about, then then I'm just working with my aperture. So let's go over here to camera sim, and right now the aperture is right in the middle, and I'm going to switch it. There's all kinds of different uh, settings you can play with, but I'm going to go manual. Manual basically means that you are controlling all of the settings, your camera isn't making any decisions for you. Um, aperture priority means you want to set the aperture and the, let the camera make the rest of the decisions. Shutter means you want to set the shutter and let the camera make the rest of the, the decisions. But I'm going to go for manual. So here I'm going to take a portrait and I want a really shallow depth of field. So if I want a shallow depth of field, less is in focus and I need a large aperture, which I know is confusing at first, but a large aperture means a smaller number. Okay, so large aperture. And if you look down here at the meter, which is right here, I can see that it says plus two. Now that means that I am two stops overexposed. Okay, if I took it back to where they had it, right in the center means that zero, it, is, it, it has a good exposure. Okay, so as I go this way, I need to make sure that I change another setting to make sure that I have uh, the right exposure. So if I took a photo right now, you're going to see that it's way too bright. Okay, that's not what you want. All right. So instead, we're going to come back over here and I'm going to take my aperture down. And then I'm going to take my shutter speed up because remember, the faster the shutter speed, the less light is coming in. Okay. And yeah, pretty cool. So let me go back to the viewfinder. And if we keep going up, all right, so there we are at 2.8, one thousandth of a second. ISO 200, if I take a photo now, hey, we're looking pretty good. All right, so now let's say that it was the opposite way. I wanted to have the whole background, you know, maybe I'm doing a promotional shot for um, the, the playground here and I wanna make sure that's it, that's all in focus too. So I'm gonna take my aperture up and if you're watching the meter, while I'm doing that, it's moving around. It's saying, whoa, 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 you're not letting in, a, an, in enough light anymore. So let's take it up around here, and I'm going to take it down and try to get it centered. Okay, there's 1 60th of a second. Now, if I wanted to go any slower, I would need to be on a tripod, which you can play with on here, but let's keep that off for now. Um, usually 1 60th of a second is as slow that you want to be hand-holding your camera without a tripod. All right, but F11, well, that's right in the middle, and I'll get some of this background and focus, but I want to go all the way up. So I'm going to try going to F20, which is as small of an aperture as this uh, camera simulator will let me go. And as that, you can see now, we are underexposed. 
I don't want to take my shutter speed any slower um, because then I will have a blurry photo. So let's just look at it real quick. Okay, you can see that she's blurry now. So instead, I'm going to take it back to 1 60th of a second and I'm going to take my ISO up so that my uh, sensor is more sensitive and looks like we can't go right in between so I'll go about right there and let's see let's take the photo and hey not too bad okay so the background is nice and in focus she's in focus everything's good now if you were paying attention as I was paying my playing with my shutter speed the pinwheel started to look differently so that takes me to shutter speed and when I'm playing with shutter speed the question is do I want to freeze the motion or do I want to show the motion? Okay, so um, if I want to freeze the motion, I need to have a faster shutter speed. So I'm going to go up here back to a thousandth of a second and I'm going to move back and I'm going to go ahead and reset my ISO. I'm going to take it all the way to 100. Okay, and I'm going to be looking at my meter and I'm going to open up my aperture. I'm going to make it a larger aperture and as I'm moving it, moving it, moving it, and well, I'm still about one stop underexposed. So now I'm gonna take my ISO up. All right, now we're good again. All right, so let's take a photo. And hey, look at that pinwheel is perfectly frozen in time. All right, but now let's say that, hey, I wanted to show the motion of the pinwheel. So again, let's take the shutter speed down. Shutter speed going down. And let's take it back to, let's say a 60th of a second. And now that my now it's saying that I'm way um, overexposed, so I need to ch change my aperture. I need to let less light in. So as I move to a smaller aperture, which is a bigger number, like I said, I know it's confusing. Um, I'm letting less light in. And now we're right here in the middle on the meter again. Take the photo, nice exposure, and we're showing motion. Simple as that.